Hi everyone, I want to touch on uh, about the relapsing of SIBO that can occur after treatment with rifaximin. Now, rifaximin is very effective. 80-90% of the patients get a great response to it. How do they know? Often a lot of their GI symptoms are better. Within the first couple of weeks, some of their autonomic symptoms, like they're quite as lightheaded, you know, headaches aren't quite as bad within the first couple of weeks. Now, it won't disappear, but they contribute to that. Some people, their anxiety may drop by, you know, a good third of intensity. So you can feel some stuff right away. And that's been, uh, you know, you've the, basically the excess bacteria in the small intestine have been cleared out. Or as I put it, you know, you've gotten rid of the fish where the birds are. And so... Now, some patients you give them 10 days of Rifaximin and they do great for many, many months. I've had like people like, oh, two, three years, no problem, okay? And then they relapse. Then you have other people that will relapse rather quickly. Now, you have to look at your relapses in two ways. One, is there something reasonable that could be attributed to that? Now, what, what does that mean, reasonable? Anything that might slow your intestinal tract down, abdominal surgery, general anesthesia, um, had brain trauma that's either, you know, significant head injury, emotional trauma, you know, inflammatory trauma, things like that. So all of these things can cause a temporary slowing of the gut, slowing of the small intestine, and boom, give you bacterial overgrowth. Um, but many times there isn't anything. And patients are like, God, what happened? Why did this happen? Well, that's because you have already have slow intestinal tract motility, most likely from uh, a prior brain injury and this persistent inflammation. And so that's kind of what happens. And so, uh, you know, in the early days, we would see, uh, you know, you give somebody a treatment, 10 days of rifaximin, I should say, and they do better, and they, you know, they're also on the fish on olive oil, the vagus stimulator I talk about, and they'll do well for, say, six weeks, and then they can tell their symptoms come back. And so I treat them, you know, I have that thing called the SIBO fingerprint, which are the symptoms that kind of get better within the first week or two, and you kind of have to make note of those. So when some of those symptoms start coming back, that's your sign, okay, I need another round of Rifaximin. And so patients would take, you know, every six weeks, take around every six weeks. And then what we would see with all the other components to, you have to get these other components in place to control inflammation. The small intestine starts to recover. The motility starts to improve. And now instead of every six weeks, they'll start saying, oh, it's like every 10 to eight weeks, I'm doing better than pretty soon. It's like every four, six months I relapse. And then you see this time stretch out as the small intestine motility improves. Now these are just spontaneous relapses, not secondary to something else. So you kind of don't get too confused there. You got to separate the two. It's pretty obvious though. That's pretty obvious. Um, like for myself, I personally don't have spontaneous relapses uh, at, at this point. It's just mine occur after some emotional event, you know, death of a loved one or something like that. And uh, boom, within a a few days to a week after I hear the news or the event happens, um, I got a relapse again. I've taken another 10 days of Rifaximin. So that's how you look at all that. And uh, I hope you find that useful. It's not that the Rifaximin doesn't work. If you feel those improvements in the first, you know, week or two, it's working. It's just that the relapsing is a function of, the spontaneous relapsing is a function of the slow motility of the small intestine. So I hope that helps you kind of understand that a little bit better and helps you in your path to recovery. Take care, everybody. Bye.